say a few words about these scriptures tonight. The ministry of intercession. You cannot read these verses without coming to the conclusion that Abraham was a man who knew how to pray. He was a man that uh, was willing to intercede on the behalf of others. Abraham did not have this mentality that seems to, well, I rescued Lot one time. If he gets himself into trouble this time, then let him get himself out. You ever heard anybody say that? I have to confess to you, I've heard people say that. I've helped them. I, I, I went and tried to do all the good for them. Now, if you do this again, you're on your own. Now, you're not getting my help. All I can say tonight, you may feel justified in doing that, but I, all I can say tonight, Aren't you glad God didn't say that to us? <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, I'm glad God didn't say to me, all right, I got you out this time. I helped you this time. Don't you come back to me again and again. Abraham, that was not his response. Because of his faith in God, his character had been changed, and he had a completely different attitude toward Lot. He had already been involved in a ministry of intercepting him and confronting him about going down to Sodom. And now he comes again and he sees Lot going to be led down into Sodom again. And he says in his own heart, uh, that's my family. I've got to do something about it. I've, I've got to help him, even though he does not even want my help, even though he doesn't even recognize he needs help. And so he begins this ministry. God gave him this ministry of interceding on behalf of Lot. When Lot could not help himself, uh, thank God there was somebody that wanted to help him. Uh, you, you will notice in these verses, uh, I'd like to say at least four things tonight about this ministry of intercession, uh, being able to pray for others being able to go to God on their behalf. Um, there are many reasons why we don't do that. Uh, I, I'm aware of all the excuses. I'm aware of all the reasons uh, that people do not feel the need to do that. But I, I sort of think that Abraham was so moved by what God had done for him that he, he began this ministry of interceding on Lot's behalf. Uh, I just point out one, one thing, uh, just a little statement where he began this ministry of intercession. Uh, if you'll just notice a little, little phrase in verse 23, after all that had gone on, the Bible said that Abraham, verse 23, drew near. When he didn't have anywhere else to go, when he didn't have anywhere else to turn, this, this man of faith um, drew near to God and began this ministry of praying for his nephew. Uh, if you've got somebody on your heart tonight, you know somebody close to you that 
are headed down the wrong path and you know if they don't get off that road they're going to end up in destruction then you say what can I do what can, they won't listen to me they, I, I've said everything I know to say I've done everything I know to do I'm just going to say tonight that when everything else fails tell God about it talk to God about it and Abraham so bold when he comes to God and that, that'd be the first thing I want to point out tonight. I say, in this ministry of interceding, uh, first of all, it begins with the boldest to pray to God. Uh, you, you read this passage, and uh, here's a great example. Uh, this, this wicked city, these two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, Abraham approaches God, and uh, I think it's a bold step for him to stand before the Almighty God and said, God, I'm not here praying for myself. I'm not here asking about me, but I do have somebody in my family that needs your help. They're, they're not in the shape to pray for themselves. Uh, they don't even care about asking for themselves, but I will come to intercede on their behalf. I will come boldly, do I need to remind you tonight our New Testament tells us because of our faith in God that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and there we could obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of our need. We can come boldly because we are the people of God and we are the children of God. He begins this bold praying. And he even makes a statement. You say, how bold was he? When he started asking God on behalf of Lot, he looks up in the face of God and said, well, will not the judge of all the earth do right? I mean, almost to say, God, I know you're not going to do wrong about this. I've come boldly. I've asked you. I've got a need. He understood. He understood who God was. No wonder he is the friend of God, the Bible says. And he talked to God as a friend. And boldly he's standing before God on behalf of Lot and Sodom itself. And by faith, he boldly comes. And I would encourage you tonight to say to you that if you are in the family of God, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. You don't have to be backward. You don't have to be timid. Now, when my mom and dad were alive, uh, when I would get the opportunity to go down to see them, when I walked in their house, I did not walk in there like a stranger. In fact, I didn't even knock on the door. I just open the door and walk in. I didn't even ask could I go in the kitchen. My mama knew me well enough if she had anything or that's where I was headed. I was going to the stove or I was going to the refrigerator to find out what she had in there. You know why? Because that's my mama and that's my daddy and I was their child. I could boldly go in there because that's where I was raised. I was in that home. Do you know you're in the Father's presence and you can boldly go into the throne of grace? I don't know why we're so timid when it comes to this, this area. But God says because you are one of my children, you can come and ask me boldly you can boldly pray this man was so bold I mean he, he just after praying after telling God asking God for something and then he had the nerve to say to God don't you know the judge of all the earth to do right <laughs> boldness when he prayed I just say we need some bold praying in this day. Boldly going to the throne of grace 
because he is our father and we are one of his children. You know what this ministry of intercessory prayer involved? Number one, involved boldness in our praying. But lest we mistake what Abraham was doing and somehow think Abraham shouldn't have been doing this over and over again, I will say secondly that intercessory prayer is not only boldness in praying, but there's always humility in our praying. You read through this prayer, it becomes very obvious that Abraham knows who God is and know who he is. In this second petition, he makes unto God Here's what he says to the Lord. Um, read it in the passage. Verse 27. Abraham answered, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. I will remind you that Abraham, he knew who God was, but he knew who he was. <laughs> he understood he wasn't anything. God was everything. He's standing before Almighty God. He's fully aware of who God is. He's the God of heaven and earth. But he also says, by the way, Lord, I know who I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm not anything. I'm just dust and ashes. You created me. I am the one that you created. Everything about me, you are the creation, and I am the creature. I understand that when I pray, God, in all humility, he says. I can have boldness because of who you are, but I've got to have humility because I know who I am. Do you hear me tonight? I'm just going to tell you, You've got boldness because God is God. But brother, don't ever get so bold that you forget who you are and forget who I am. We're nothing but the dust and ashes of this earth and we don't even have the right to stand before God to begin with. And humility understands, God, you're everything. I am nothing. I'm here praying. I'm here pleading. I'm asking not for myself. I'm praying for somebody else. Do I need to remind us tonight that God will give grace to the humble? <laughs> He'll resist the proud. This, this was not a proud prayer that Abraham was praying. This was not Abraham up there boasting about himself. He was not boasting and pleading about, Lord, do you know who I am? I'll tell you, God knew who he was. I remind you tonight, God knows who I am. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be full of pride if I went to God and said, God, do you know that I'm the pastor down at Bethel Baptist? You think that's going to impress God one bit? Be careful how you answer that. <laughs> we sort of throw our name around, throw our weight around. Brother, you can do that other places, but it don't work when you go before God, before the throne of grace. And Abraham said, Lord, do you know I am nothing? I got the right to come to you, but I come in all humility. Because you are God, I am dust and ashes. How do you intercede? How do you pray for somebody? You got somebody you're praying for tonight? You got somebody on your heart? You know somebody tonight that needs prayer? That person in your ought to have somebody on your heart that you're praying for, that you're interceding. They probably don't care a thing about God, don't care a thing about church, don't care anything about being around God's people. That doesn't matter. The thing that matters is that you know how to pray for them. And a long time before I ever came to the Lord, somebody was praying for me. And I dare say every one of us here tonight are here because somebody prayed for you. I've told you over and over again, I'll tell it till I get to heaven. He said, well, we've heard that before. Well, you, you have to talk with Apostle Paul. When Paul, you read the New Testament, every city Paul preached in, first thing he said, 
Can I tell you about when I was on the Damascus Road, there's a light shining down of heaven. And the next city he went to, and he said, can I tell you about going down the Damascus Road? It worried. He never got over it, and he just kept telling it again and again and again. I'm here tonight to tell you I had never got over it, and I'm going to tell it until I see that little ain't of mine in heaven one day that confronted me one day with tears in her eyes. said, when are you giving your life to God? I didn't appreciate that either. I didn't say anything because she is family, but I said it under my breath. But who does she think she is? And don't she know who I am? Well, the thing about it, she didn't care who I was. God just put me on her heart, and she began to pray for me. You ever got somebody to pray for you like that, brother? You are blessed. Somebody got you on their heart, they're praying for you, or some of your family members, you are blessed of the Lord. You didn't get here all by yourself. I'm just here to tell you. Ah, mercy. <laughs> we didn't do God any favor when he got us, I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> he just got a bunch of sinners saved by the grace of God. This, this ministry, this ministry of intercession, you can go to God boldly. You must go to God humbly. Can't read this passage that I read tonight. That intercessory prayer, uh, there must be persistence in praying. Now I read I read this passage. And I sort of think Abraham began with the fifty. Lord, if there are fifty righteous down in Sodom. Uh, could you not destroy the city? Uh, I think he might have had a little optimism in his mind. He thought, surely, there got to be 50 in that city that are righteous. So that's where he began. He began with, began with this 50 proposition to the Lord. And when God informed him, Abraham... They're not 50 down there. Then he dropped it down to 45. And when God informed him there was not 45 down there that were righteous, he kept coming down to 40, he moved on down. Till he got down to 10 righteous people that could not be found in this city. Abraham one thing you learn about reading about his life in Genesis, uh, he is human. I sort of think in his mind he might have thought, well, if there are not ten righteous people down in that city, they don't need to be spared. They're worthy of the judgment of God. But when you read that, read that uh, portion of this chapter, you can't, can't help but coming away with, he didn't give up praying. He kept on praying. And it, it is to our shame tonight that so many times we make our petitions to God, and if God doesn't answer it in a certain time, we just stop praying, we, keep, we stop asking. But there was, there was no stopping with Abraham. I mean, he was pleading for the mercy of God, he had a nephew down there. I'll tell you, when you have a, when you pray with intercession for others, uh, you better be persistent at it. Um, it is so important not to give up on 
So important not to stop praying for others. Do you know God blesses you if you will not give up on others? And God blesses others if you don't give up on them. You will eventually be blessed if you will not give up your prayer. God ever answered any of your prayers? <laughs> huh? Were you not blessed? I think about that little woman, my daddy's sister, that was so bold, you know, her boldness exceeded her. And when she confronted me, well, I just want to tell you, it wasn't about, a, about six weeks after that that I couldn't take it anymore and I just couldn't stand it. And I finally walked out, out of the pew of that church and walked down there and gave my life to Jesus. I want to tell you, the person that was blessed the most in that church can I tell you who was blessed the most? Before I got out of the altar, I heard her in the back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, nobody had to tell me who she was I, because she had already invested a lot of time in me and prayed for me. And when God answered, I want to tell you, not only did I get blessed down there, but brother, she got a blessing that day. Abraham just kept right on praying. I encourage you tonight, I encourage you. Don't stop praying. Don't stop. God hears. Intercessory prayer. You've got to be bold in what you pray. You've got to be humble when you pray. You've got to be persistent and you don't give up. And number four, do you know this kind of praying is selfless praying? Do you know when you invest your time to pray for somebody else, it is the most selfless thing you can do? Because your praying is not about you. Abraham is not praying for himself. He's praying for Lot. He's not asking God for himself. His only concern when he's praying, oh Lord, I've got a nephew down there. And when Solomon and Gomorrah, if you destroy that city, he may be destroyed with them. And so he's willing to pray not for his benefit, not on his behalf, but he's praying selflessly. I... I hesitate to say this, but so many times we're content to be blessed personally by our praying and others are not blessed through it. Somebody wrote a hymn some time ago. You probably have heard it. I'm not sure we have sung it, but it's an old hymn. And here's how it goes. Lord, help me to live from day to day in such a self-forgetful way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayer shall be for others. Help me in all the work I do to ever be sincere and true and know that all I do for you must needs be done for others. Let self be crucified and slain and buried deep and all in vain. May efforts be to rise again unless to live for others. Others, Lord, yes, others. Let this my motto be. Help me to live for others that I might live like thee. You want to be like Jesus? <laughs> you love like Jesus loved. You pray like Jesus prayed. You sacrifice like Jesus did. The way to be blessed and all of us wouldn't here would agree tonight. And if you're out in the parking lot, if you hear this sometime later, 
You say, I need a blessing. Could I just encourage you? You start being a blessing to somebody. <laughs> and brother, I'll tell you, you'll be blessed beyond measure. I ran into somebody the other day and uh, surprised me, surprised me. You know, I don't mind being surprised. And I ran into a person from another church, from another church. And they approached me out in public and said, Preacher, I just want you to know, just want you to know. I sat down and listened to you preach this past Sunday. And he said, I couldn't cut it off. I had to listen to the whole thing. I thought, well, praise God. <laughs> you know, you do have control whether you cut it or not. But said, I'm just, just got to tell you, it helped me. And it blessed me. Well, that's all it takes. I don't need but one person to tell me that. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind having more than one, but uh, uh, <laughs> not along the way. Do you, do you don't mind somebody telling you you're a blessing? Isn't that true? Do you show sure like that? I don't know how we got to this place in the church. I ain't going to do it. Well, shut yourself off from the blessings of God then if you want to. You want to be blessed? You, you bless somebody else. Some of it will spill out on you. <laughs> and you'll be blessed as well. Abraham, what an example of a man who knew how to pray. This whole opening section of Genesis, the reason I know that it's God's word, because it tells us the good and the bad and the ugly. Do you believe some of that's in the life of Abraham? Good things, bad things, ugly things. And before we say, oh, Abraham, I hate to tell you, if you start examining everybody in his life, there's some good, there's some bad, and there are some ugly chapters in our lives as well. Amen? I ain't got no ugly thing. Well, you ain't lived long enough. Just live long enough. You will. We all got some of that in there, don't we? But aren't you glad, aren't you glad for a God like our God tonight? Amen. Would you like to stand with me tonight, please? And uh, we'll come right back. Too much about Abraham we need to learn from. And we'll, we'll have our prayer concerns tonight. You want, you've got somebody you want to mention for us to pray. Right, let's do that. Yes. your heart, Rhonda. I have a praise. Thanks, every, I want to thank everybody for praying for Pat. She came through those tests good, and uh, she's still in very good right now, but uh, she's doing good. I need to find her. All right, all right. Everybody's not feeling good tonight. Pray for Ray, pray for Miriam, if you will.
hearts are bowed. And this study tonight, I'm sure every person in here, the name or the face of somebody we know has crossed our mind that needs prayer. Of course, we all need prayer in this building tonight. But there are those that are headed down a road of destruction. They need, they need somebody to help them. We're going to learn in this study that God heard this prayer. God sent help down to Sodom to knock on the door of Lot. Get him out of there. Saying God is available. Saying God's powerful. He can do what we cannot do. There's some praying here. If you want to come and pray here tonight, you just get a burden of heart. You say, I need to call on God. I need help. We need to help each other pray. I have some burdens on my heart. I have some needs. I would ask any other our women want to come and help pray here tonight, feel free to do so. We would love for you to come and just join. And this is a burden. I, the Lord has brought us to this point in this study. It is no accident that we're here and that we need, we need others to pray with us, to pray for us. And so we're going to join our hearts together. This specific need of prayer. I just tell you, I just tell you, isn't it comforting when you got somebody to pray with you, pray for you? It's encouraging that other people help you bear your burdens with you. And so we come to this need, Father. And Lord, so many that have been mentioned tonight in this building, you care about every one of them, but Lord, specifically we come for this mother, this daughter that's out there, no, nobody in this family knows, but you know. Lord, you are aware. You know where she is. You know what she's facing. Lord, I don't know tonight. This may be a special time when some way, somehow, you speak to her heart. You get somebody to talk to her. Make her aware that there's some people that love her and that are praying for her. And so, Father, we ask for that we, we pray that you'd interrupt their life. Lord, no matter what road they're on, you can interrupt them. And you can help us to intercede on their behalf. And so we ask for that tonight to stir this heart, stir our heart. We'll pray. We'll keep on praying. We'll be like Abraham. We will not give up praying. We'll just keep on asking. We'll keep on asking. Because we believe you're a God that hears and a God that does answer prayer. I pray you'll give this strength to this mom, to these family members. Just strengthen them and help them to hold on to the promises of God. And you'll never fail us. You'll never let us down. We ask this, Lord, not for our sake. We're going to be like Abraham. It's not a selfish prayer we pray, but it's a selfless prayer that we pray uh, tonight, praying for others. Have your way. Lord, we give you the glory. We're, we're going to give you the praise. Lord, we're already going to thank you tonight. We're going to thank you in advance because we know you hear and we know that you will answer. Lord, this is not a selfish prayer that we pray. Not about us, but Lord, it's for your glory. And Lord, somebody's in trouble, they need your help. And Lord, we ask for your intervention on their behalf. We're going to, we're going to give you praise. We're going to give you all the glory. Uh, we believe that day's going to come. We're going to give you the glory for how you answer it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.